M0FXB, welcome to my channel and we're looking at the STR control software for the, at the moment, the ICOM 705, but it does do uh, the 7610, the 7300 and a few other ones. And it's an iOS system, Apple, Mac, iPhone, and it works well in, in my opinion. So I'm just learning and teaching myself how to use this remotely using an internet address, not of my home local router uh, which is in itself um, is a learning curve, but using an internet address, if I was not at home, if I was say, I'm in, I'm in the UK now, I, I want to be able to be in Australia and I want to co connect to my ICOM 705, which will be switched on at home, connected to my whichever antenna and I can fully control it and listen to it, including my audio. Uh, I can talk via my, my phone, iPad, ETC, the other side of the world and just play radio uh, if I want so here's how I've configured it on the radio we just go to menu then set go up to wireless LAN with our larger VFO tap it and we're going to make sure it's turned on okay wireless LAN on tap it it goes off it doesn't make a sound when you turn it on and off which is weird anyway go down to station and you want station you want it to be station at connection type you can choose station or access. Just choose station, okay? And then go back with the back arrow. You'll know it's station because it will say station. Then you want to, the next thing is you're, you're, you're putting in the settings for your station. So connect, taps station, then tap access point. And this, at this point, you're going to do a little search and connect to your Wi-Fi at home. So whichever one's strongest, I, you know, and um, so connect to the one you like, okay? I've connected to that one there. Back out, we know we're connected. The next thing we need to know is that we have got an IP address here, okay? And it, sometimes you have to reboot. Make a note of that IP address, okay? Let's go back to station settings. Let's go back one. And we're gonna look at station settings. Actually, we're gonna go, yeah, I'm faffing a bit, we'll go Network name, that was in there as ICOM 705. Leave that alone. Go down one more and go remote settings. So let me just show you that again. Connection type is station. Connection settings we've done. Tap that. It's already in there. But sometimes you have to reboot. Then we've got network name. Then remote settings. That's the next one down. All these have to be on because you're using 5001, 5002, 5003. You want that on, but they're on by default anyway by the looks of it. Then the network user, that's really important. So the user ID, create it yourself, remember it, write it down, write down your password, and I put network user administrator, yes. These are all the, the numbers we're gonna need, okay? Once you've done that, what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to connect your, your um, iPhone to this already via your home Wi-Fi, and I'll just show you that. Okay, there's our icon in the background. We're gonna get our iPhone here. Download the app. Unfortunately, you do have to pay. <laughs> so download the app for your iPhone and you pay separately for your iPad or your Mac PC. And then tap SDR and then go to, um, let's have a look now. We're gonna look at settings at the moment. Uh, available radios and it should, if you've set it up correctly, it should, the one you want should show up. Now, I've, I, as you can see, I've, I've, done, I've been playing around this morning. We've got a few here, so let's have a look. Let's just go adding one from the scratch now. now remember, we had the, the 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 numbers that we we saved. Hopefully, this isn't too blurry for you. So we're just going to click add, and we can give it a name so we know what we're doing. So for now, I'm just going to put all the sevens there. IP address. Now I'll show you that IP address again. You just go menu, set, LAN. Go up from remote settings, connection settings. Look, what it's 192.168.1.26. You need to be on the same network as that if you're at home. Okay, that's that's the main numbers. And we did the username and password, didn't we? And my network is the same. Look, it's Mercury, which is the one I'm using. Actually, no, it's not. I'm using the other one, which is Vodafone. So I'll just hold it because I've got two here at home. Don't want to confuse you. But I'm on Vodafone. So the 705 and this phone are both on Vodafone at the moment. And it does matter when you're going via, you know, via your local connection, which means the internet in your house. Okay, so we know that's connected there. If anything, it's tell it to forget that one. Otherwise you'll get confused, really. But let's back out like so. 
Back to the connection screen, I'm going to type in that IP address. So look, that's just for reference. IP address that was on the radio. I do, the port doesn't matter at this point. Username and password that we set earlier in the network settings. And then we should be able to just add that as a new thing. So see the 777s? And then if we've got it all set up right, when we tap this, and then tap, it will go grey, then tap connect, it will connect to the radio, and it's starting to do it already. Okay? If I tap VFO at the bottom here, at the bottom, look, there we are. It's all connected. And it's pretty cool. I'm not going to show you how to use it in this video because this is more of a setup so that we now know that it's working via you know via wi-fi and local internet now the next thing is to configure how we're going to get it to work from you know from our the ip address of our broadband router from anywhere in the world so the ip address of our home but not our local local ip address is completely different than the ip address of your home Right, we're over to our computer and we've logged into my router at home. There are instructions here that I will link in that I've been given by Marcus. So, you know, check them out. Uh, the link will be in the description. So let's go to my router and what I've logged in and I'm in expert mode and I'm using a Vodafone router. So all the only couple of things I did was click on internet like so. And I did two things. One was I went to IPV port mapping like so and I put in it was easier let's just pretend to add one to just put in TCP UDP 5001 to 5003 it did it in one hit that's why I liked it I'll do that again and just show you so all you would do is put in a name so put 705 um, TCP UDP although they do tell you you only need UDP then when you if you've connected properly if it's connected to your router it will say ICOM 705 and it will actually automatically put the address there for you and then I did port range and I just put 5001 here uh, to 5003 and then I did it again here 5001 and to 5003 it's what I did and I saved it I'm not going to save it now because I don't want to muck up what I've already got so cancel that and then it still didn't work when I went over here the static NAD thing I had to ex and this is, you know, at your risk. You need to find out if you're allowed to do this. And um, But I put, uh, I slid that across exposed host function. Warning, by using the exposed host function, you bypass the firewall of the Vodafone Wi-Fi hub. Please make sure that your computer is protected against attack. Because I had to do this, I just couldn't get it working. Now, I will turn it off now. But for test purposes, I've uh, I've done it. And so once I've done that, the next thing is you need your, your IP address, your world IP address. All you do is just... Open a new, a new browser and go myipaddress.com. Now remember, this is my setting, what I did. I'm going to change all these. But there it is there, myipaddress.com, 84692124. So now over back over to my phone. I swiped down a couple of times. It's Android phone. This is a Galaxy 22. Went to mobile hotspot. Hold my finger down like so, and I set a username and password, as you can see, so I could share the Wi-Fi of this phone, which uses my 4G uh, with, my, with my iPhone, and then I just paired the iPhone. At the moment, my iPhone is connected, but it's using my local IP. We're now going to change the setting, so we're going to hit the disconnect button there, top right, and we're going to change the setting. So what we're going to do is go to settings, like so, and this time, available radios, we're going to add a new one. And the one I add now is going to be that IP address that we found. So if I tap it, it's the same as adding it. I'll just click edit. I'll show you the setting. So we've given it a name, but we've added the word remote. Then we've put in the IP address of my house. We, the port stayed at 5001. And then we put the same you know, username and password that we had before. That didn't need to change. And then we just click done. And then when we go to connect, we need to make sure that the internet is turned on, on sharing on the mobile phone I just showed you. And then it will provide internet to this to the iPhone, which in turn will then allow it to connect to the to the radio. The iPhone on the on the Android. This is the phone that's sharing the internet. If I scroll up, look, it says connected device. Okay, and uh, so we are connected. You'll see that on my the iPhone that's going to be controlling the 705, it's connected to that network that I called Mercury 3G. So, okay, we'll open the app like so. 
and it will say available devices but this time we're going to try and choose the one that's remote which is 705 remote on the home IP address and with a bit of luck if you've configured it properly it will connect right, well in the end um, I, it wouldn't go on my 4G I'm not really sure why but it would go if I shared the Wi-Fi from this phone that I'm recording uh, to my iPhone so we are now going to walk up the road and um, we're going to see if we can use this device up the road. I'll get it back onto my uh, my hubnet node so we can have a chat. Okay, well we're all connected. Uh, as you can see, you can see the scope. If we tap here, we see the frequency. We can talk from the iPhone if we want. We can listen from the iPhone if we want. We've got a speaker thing here. We can go to FT8 very quickly. Just tap the screen and it takes everything. You just push RX takes everything there it takes a while to populate you know depending on how good your antenna is I can turn up the volume on the phone or I can listen on the radio it's up to me and yes if you change something on the phone it will change on the radio and vice versa now if you get the iPad version it's better you get more for your money uh, but it still works great you know it's still very handy on your iPhone I recommend the iPad version because it's bigger, isn't it? iPads are really cheap now. Once you once it populates here, FTA. Now there is a toolbox as well. If we just show you, it's starting to populate. We'll just show you a toolbox. Toolbox there. Just the wrong button. There it is. So you've got all these nifty things you can use. Band plan, CW, is that decode? DX cluster, POTA, PSK reporter, prime buttons. I haven't used that. Logbook, network status, QRZ lookup, scanning, and then you've got your memories here, which I found. And you, you select my groups, and then you select your memory channels. Go back to F28. If I double tap someone, it will start to TX. Look at that, TX. SWR is not too bad today. And if I let it run for a couple of minutes, um, hopefully we'll get a contact. I'll just let it run. And um, what else can I show you? Go back to VFO. Now, when you're in VFO, you don't get the scope, but you can change the band here, the, the mode, VFO AB. You've got your mic gain level here. RF power is showing there. Attenuator, you've got filters, squelch, preamp, noise blanker, lots of functions there. You can see it TX in again. There's power right at the end, look. Okay, well, so we're on about five watts there because we're just on the battery. PTT, if you push that one, you get a big PTT, a giant PTT. Um, uh, look, there's a log, there's change of step here. Now, to change frequency, you've got an arrow there, slow and fast. Or you can tap it and then type the frequency, like so. And if we hit scope, you can change the width of the scope. And look, if you look close, the scope does actually show the call signs of FT8 as well. There's, of course, we like stuff like that. And I'll show you the maps. The map's quite cool when you're using FT8. So let's just go back to FT8. No contact yet. And we'll tap map at the top here. And you get this globe up here, which is very nice. It looks the biz. And you can tap it and you can zoom in and tap the stations. And it's like grid tracker, isn't it? So you're getting all these co live contacts. Go back like so and it's still TXing. remember i can walk away i don't have to be at my radio now i can walk away anywhere i want and of course the screen server comes on so that's it well let me know how you get on with it i'm trying to demonstrate it i mean i have showed it using my wi-fi uh, but this is showing it using your basically your ip address at home you get your ip address at home myipaddress.com and you're effectively just making sure your port, the route, the route, the port are open on your router. And we've all got different routers. And they are 5001, 5002, 5003. And I think they're the same ports for the RSBA1. And even for things like Echolink. It just rings a bell with Echolink. So good luck with that. Thanks for watching my channel. Catch you on air. 73 M0FX. Be clear.